Musta. My name is Victor, and today's tutorial is brought to you by Juyin. Today, I'm gonna to teach you guys how to create a fashion spec ad, and we're gonna break down everything from production, gear, all the way to tips and tricks in terms of making a spec commercial. So let's talk about pre-production and planning. First of all, what are you using this spec ad for? Are you trying to hook in clients or are you trying to showcase something for your skills? Maybe it's your creative vision or your execution. Now the spec ad for me is to showcase what I can do with a psych wall. Psych wall is a cyclorama wall where it has curves on the corners and it just looks like an infinite background. So I really wanted to play with the lighting and also just commercial type movement in terms of fashion. And we're also mixing in some performance concept videos because I don't have any in my portfolio. So this is my opportunity to mix in performance piece and fashion at the same time while having this commercial look with a psych wall. So that's my overall plan for this video. Second thing you need to look out for is to find looks, kind of like lighting setups, and I use Frameset app for that, and they have a lot of commercials. You can type psych wall, you can type whatever you want, and you kind of you recreate that lighting, or you can kind of take inspiration from those. The third thing for pre-production and planning is kind of look at the brand and figure out what they are and what their target audience is. In this video, we have an indie brand from Toronto and that they are kind of like an artistic side. So I'm using the artistic performance piece with their dancing and also mixed in with their fashion brand. So it's a good mix. And I feel like we really did pull off a decent spec ad for their brand. I brought in my FX3 with me and that I was using the Sony 24 millimeter G master lens. And I just really wanted a versatile focal length, which can cover wide and some close-ups if I really wanted to. And since this is a performance piece and a fashion shoot at the same time, you kind of just want to have a decent wide angle on your setup. And then we slapped on a Nisi matte box in there. I put the C5 with their diffusion filter on there as well so that it kind of just blooms it for me. And I'm not gonna go into detail with the camera settings, but I just did Cine EI 400 for this one. We brought in the Juin Crane 4 and that gave us this professional look with some dynamic gimbal movement. But since we're going for that commercial look that you see on most ads, most of them are either stabilized by a steady cam or a gimbal. And since this is a performance piece, we wanted to have dynamic movements alongside with the dancers. So it worked out perfectly for what we're looking for in this type of shoot. And if used right, a gimbal can easily up your production value. So I just wanna expand a little bit more on the new gimbal, the Crane 4, because this is a gimbal that can hold small cinema cameras like the FX6 or the FX3 that is rigged up onto your gimbal. That means that you can have a heavy lens with your FX3, you can have a dedicated map box and you can rig it up and this gimbal can still handle the payload. Now, another good thing for me, especially I'm doing a lot more of vertical content in terms of client work, is that this offers a seamless switch between horizontal to vertical. Now, the biggest addition that they added here, which is that wrist rest, and the adjustable sling grip. These two really help you kind of maneuver the gimbal pretty good and that your dominant hand is tightly snug onto the gimbal so that you don't really get tired when shooting with these setups. Plus you have the support of the second grip, which is the adjustable sling grip. You can put it on the side and you can also put it in the back. And another thing, if you are in a rush or kind of like you don't kind of know how to balance, especially for heavier rigs that is reaching the max payload, this gimbal also has an intelligent balancing feature. I noticed this on the Crane M3S that they have a little screen for it, but the Crane 4 really takes it up a notch by having the little LED circles on each motor. And that'll tell you if it's red, it's not balanced. If it's white, then you're all good to go. And you can also click the balance on the screen and it'll tell you which axis that you need to balance still. And one thing I really appreciate that Juin did is that they included an actual carrying 
case for these. They kind of switch into bags and I appreciate cases more than bags, especially for professional work because you come in on set, you have these little cool little uh, cases that come with it and it just feels like you're, it's a more professional thing. A few more things that carried over from the Weeble 3 is the fill light. This one is actually a little bit stronger. It has 10 watt fill light and you can also diffuse it with this little rubbery diffusion thing and it's quite nice it offers you a 3200 lux on the maximum brightness and it's also by color oh with this gimbal too you don't need to connect your camera using a cable because you can now connect your fx3 or applicable cameras with this gimbal via bluetooth you might think that these are just smaller features but they actually have a big impact in your shooting experience <laughs> Now I want to talk about the gimbal moves, especially for commercial work. And these are kind of like my go-to and my staple moves in terms of commercial filmmaking. The first one is my push-in shot. A good push-in shot has intentionality. Now this might be the easiest gimbal move for your commercial work, but it's also easy to mess up, especially if there's no intention in the shot. Now this is used for mostly introduction shots wide establishing shots but for me in terms of fashion or performance pieces i would like to move alongside with the subject kind of like they're entering a space or it can also be a dynamic movement where they're coming from afar and you're pushing in towards them and it just adds a dynamic movement into your intro shot a really well done push in shot can also be a good transition cuts it can be speed ramping it can be match cuts i've used this numerous times and it works perfectly it's super seamless super simple you don't have to go over the top to get really good looking commercial shots in terms of gimbal movement one big mistake that i've seen beginners do is that they just use the gimbal wherever they move they don't have intentionality of the shot while that might be great for run and gun filmmaking intentionality within your shots in a commercial will go a longer way than you trying to whip up with some type of movement with your gimbal during the day of the shoot. So always plan ahead and make sure that it's a well done push in shot. Now the second gimbal move that I have in my arsenal is the revolving shot. Now you might have seen this a lot on social media. This is very famous because it gives you kind of like a parallax effect, but it's also a gimbal move that requires a little bit more of a practice because you want the subject to stay in the center and you kind of want to know your gimbal settings a little bit more. For me, the default settings from Juin has been my go-to and I'm really used to how it's set up right out of the box. But when I was starting out, I did a lot of gimbal work with automotive. Uh, I used to shoot like modded vehicles and I did those like crazy transitions and the orbit shot was kind of like my go-to for those. So I had a lot of practice, but if you're just starting out, I highly, highly suggest practicing for a week or two and then taking it to a shoot and utilizing it on an actual paid gig. Now for the gimbal move, it's quite an easy concept to grasp upon, but again, it's gonna require a little bit of practice. So from your starting point, you're gonna move left or right around your subject while also turning your gimbal so that your subject stays right in the center. Give it a shot with inanimate objects first, and once you've kind of get down the overall technique what you can do is add a little bit more movement in terms of your subject now my biggest tip is if you're kind of revolving to the right you have your subject turning the opposite way around so it has a little bit more of movement and it acts as a reveal maybe for the subject or for the clothing that they're using specifically if you're doing a fashion shoot now my third gimbal move is actually a side tracking shot. I use this a lot to kind of communicate where the character is going. With this shot, it's easier to pull off, but it requires coordination with the subject so that you guys move along on the same pace. Now, if you wanna add a little bit more of a wow factor in there, what you can do is you start tracking from the feet 
all the way up to the face. Now this is gonna be a tighter shot and it's gonna require a little bit more practice, but once you pull it off, it's gonna have a great reveal, especially for fashion shoots or kind of like a character reveal as well. Now, if you wanna learn more gimbal moves, my friend Kofi did his top 10 gimbal moves with the Crane 4 and you can check that out in this channel. <laughs> The whole production was actually super easy because we had streamlined it with three performance pieces for each dancer or talent. And then from there on, Kofi and I did a switcheroo. I mostly did the wide group shots, but we also took some like single talent shots. He did some detail shots and also some solo shots. And then after the performance pieces, we did some hero shots and we did some detail shots of the clothing line as well. For the lighting setup is actually quite easy. We were using a Nanlite Forza 500B with a projector so that we get that contrasty and the projector stylized look on the background. And then we also have Viva Studios lighting setup, which had four RGB lights on top where we can control each one with an iPad. And it didn't take us long to get those different lighting setups because like I said, everything was controlled through the app and that we only had one projector light to worry about. So it was quite fun and we were able to pull off the looks that we really wanted to do that day. <laughs> Now the first tip with you guys is to get a wide shot of the outfit or the look. That means that you're gonna have either a wide shot or a medium panning up shot, whatever it is to reveal the outfit. Get the look in its entirety with the set as well. Second is kind of the opposite of wide, which is details. Get some detail shots, especially if they have jewelry pieces, rings, necklaces, any accents on the clothing and any material that the look is kind of emphasizing. Anything that's unique that needs to be honed in into a shot, do a detailed shot of that. Third tip is kind of going along with the location or the set is to place the outfit where it belongs. You can't have luxurious, elegant, high fashion outfit into a grungy location. Make sure that they're cohesive, make sure the color palette is emphasizing the look rather than like fighting the look because your main focus for fashion is the clothing. Maybe it's the emotion that portrays the shot, but in our shoot, our location was clean. Our location was more of a commercial type of vibe and the performance piece really matched with the branding as well. Another tip, not just for fashion, but for any video is to mess up the pacing. You've seen this in a lot of ads as well, and it really works well if it's done right. You can cut up really quick shots and then have a slow shot. This is so that you can keep the viewer engaged and that it kind of acts as a tease for the later parts of the video, because these are quick cuts, quick snippets of what you would see later on. Messing up with the pacing as well makes your video more interesting and less boring because if you have the same pace of your edit of your spec commercial, it's just gonna feel like it's linear and someone's gonna click off. Last but not least is to get appropriate music for it. This is similar to my tip with the location. You can't have luxurious feeling with a rock song. It really has to match with your set and what you're trying to achieve with the spec commercial. Planning ahead really makes a big difference in terms of commercials because you're gonna decide everything in the beginning and the production and your post-production is going to be more efficient. Overall, pre-production is one of the best things that you can work on in terms of a video project. Try it out and see how it changes your production workflow. <laughs> Overall, I think the Crane 4 really helped us create this video and it's an important piece of tool, especially for performance pieces and something that you need for commercial work because I feel like stabilization, tasteful gimbal moves, by the way, is one of the crucial things that you can find in high-end commercials. Now, like I said, the Crane 4 with all of its features will elevate 
your production workflow. And ultimately, you're going to have fun on set and that you are also going to up your production value as a one man band team or a small team. If you are interested in looking at the Crane 4 or any of Julian's products, click on the description down below to check them out for yourself. And that's it. A huge thank you again to Julian for making this tutorial happen so that you guys can start making your own spec ads and hopefully get some clients out of it or showcase your talent, your, your creative execution, your creative vision towards your next videos. I hope you guys learned something about making a spec commercial or at least will help you out in your future productions. And as usual, I'm giving away my Sunset Film Lock Pack and all you have to do to win is comment down below. What is your favorite gimbal move? I'd love to know. If you want to see how I film cars with a gimbal, click on this video right here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. No one